Hi, my name is Francine Spicer, and I'll be talking about the Almex today, and I'll be talking about my machine. Um, this is the machine that I work on for my business, and it does engraving. Um, the Almex, I want to talk about the structures that they made, the lodge heads that we've learned a little bit about in class. Um, the Almac had 17 unique stone heads ranging from 1.47 to 3.4 meters or almost 11 feet high. And they were tons heavy. And I'll show you that in a picture that I reserved for you guys. As you can tell from the picture, they had flat faces, full lips, and most were found with wearing a helmet on their head. Um, these heads date from at least 900 BC and their features are all neck from ancient Mesoamerica. According to Britannica, the first evidence of this unique art style appeared around 1200 BC in San Lorenzo, which was the oldest known building site. They stated that in the late 20th century, a stone slab engraved with symbols that appeared to have been the Almec writing system, sometimes called Epi Almec, was discovered in the village of Cascajal near San Lorenzo. The Cascajal stone dated approximately 900 BC and may be the oldest example of writing from the Americas. So they not only had writing that we cannot decipher, but they also had these big monuments that we've seen before. Um, if you guys watch the YouTube video that I have on there from Joe Rogan Experience, in that um, video, Graham Hancock, which I think we should watch a lot of his historical um, videos and stuff, um, he was talking about the Olmec's genetics. He states that they are quite strange. They appear to be Polynesian or have African features. But as he speaks more, it was dismissed in earlier findings until we had the technology that we have today. The new technology says that they have Australian genetic or Melanesian features. He speaks of another image of a plumed or feathered serpent. That's another um, sculpture that they have also um, created from La Venta. A sculpt that was also shows their creativity and how they do these stone carvings. In National Geographic, according to this article, the Olmec civilization was the most influential ancient civilization of early Americas. So they were before the Mayas, and this is how some of these um, ancient civilization got some of their ideas. It actually came from the Olmecs. Um, they were considered, according to the writer, the mother culture. And of course, we studied other civilizations like the Mayan, the Totanic, and Zapotec. We have seen their art, their architecture, and culture. But what we've seen in that is that they were influenced by the Olmecs heritage, according to historians. The Olmecs built pyramids, mounds, aqueducts, and they had art. Gods, they, they, um, they, their religion was different gods. They did um, worship different gods. They traded and were extremely talented sculptors. The heads were sculpted using handheld tools. So imagine trying to use a handheld tool to sculpt a rock. <laughs> um, the picture that I'm going to show you, Mark Cartwright stated, the heads were each carved from a single basalt boulder, which in some cases were transported 100 kilometers to their final destination. Facial details were drilled into the stone using reeds and wet sand. So imagine how difficult that was at that time. And that was a great skill from, from the Olmecs using reeds and wet sand so that the prominent features such as the eyes and the mouth and nostrils were had a real depth. Some also have deliberately drilled dimples on the cheeks, chins, and lips. The heads all display unique facial features, often in a naturalistic and expressive manner. If you look at the heads that 
we've actually found they show emotion and it just shows how the person who carved this meant it, it meant a lot for them to show everything in their um in their art now i have an engraving business i feel i like to engrave images of what people draw up and sometimes i can create my own ideas and trace it on an item like the Almex, i'm artistic and creative they sculpt but i engrave with a machine thanks to new technology sculpting is an art of shaping figures while engraving is a practice of incision incising a design onto a hard surface by cutting grooves on it it takes a skill to do both and the know-how to hold these different objects and choose the right pressure to not puncture or crack the item that you're trying to do. I will show you a job that I engraved and pictures of different items as well. This took 17 years of experience, so imagine how the Almex were taught to learn how to sculpt rocks. It's a gift and it requires years of experience, great talent and skill. So right here is my machine and um, I get busy around this time of year because it's Christmas. So um, I have lots of machines, but I'll just show you this one here because this is the one that I use to engrave all of my products. And this is my other um, computer that I use. On this computer, I actually have, and it's called a gravograph style, and this allows me to um, put in the shape of where I want the item to be engraved. Okay. And um, I use tools just like the Omex. My tools, my tools are these. This is what I use to engrave um, glasses, mugs, anything weird. I put it in here, hopefully it'll hold. And I use these and I have different ones and different sizes to hold items. Um, most of my needles are diamond tip. And I have a lot of different needles. See this needle right here? This needle right here is, is used to cut plastic see how it's like a knife so you to cut plastic okay there's also a pencil needle this right here and this is what I use before I engrave anything because sometimes I'm engraving 10 11 o'clock at night and I'm tired so I might misspell something so I usually use this and tape and engrave on this before I actually engrave on the item in case I make any mistakes. I also have different needles like these. These needles have different diamond tips. Some are 100, some are 150, some are 0.15, and they do different types of engraving. For instance, if I need to engrave on stainless steel that's shiny, I would use the 100 tip because that would make a deeper indentation in the item and it'll show up better. If I don't want to engrave on something that I'm not familiar with, I use the 130 um, tip because that's, that means it's not going to dent the item because some people think that their item is solid, but when, you when you're ready to engrave, even if you don't use a lot of pressure, it might bend the item, break it, or destroy their item. So you have to have that skill to know how much pressure you have to use in order to secure that item. Just like the Olmex, they had to imagine using a reed and hitting the rock and getting it to do facial indentations. Eyes, nose, cut out the nose, you know. So I'm really impressed by them for doing that. And I looked up a lot of um, historical 
things that they've done and they actually interest me to actually look at other cultures so um this is what i do and um i will also show you different items like i said that i have um, engraved for some of my clients and they'll be on the powerpoint once again i want to thank um, miss laura for my history class it was awesome i learned a lot of history that i did not know i'm not from here so my history is different from the american history we have a i'm from the islands so we have a different history from what other people may have um but it was great being in this class and um i hope you guys enjoy my video and um hopefully you'll be seeing me on amazon i'm gonna put my store on there so just want to thank you guys all right bye